Well, welcome to the Osmo Early Bird Podcast. It's your old pal Emac coming to you with one out of a ship, my money share, as we get ready for a Saturday full slate of MLB action. Three early games, two, three, and four, and then 11 uh, late games. Why is that missing? Where's the 15th game? Well, that's at six o'clock. All the sites seemingly are ignoring it because it's a lonely little one game. It's uh, Baltimore at... Detroit 610. So we'll have to see what happens in any event here. Let's uh, jump on in. Let's get going because we've got lots of baseball to cover. Reminder, we are brought to you by Yahoo Fantasy Sports. If you've not yet noticed, they do have the million dollar baller out there again for a second week. 150 max, however, no CSV uploads. So Adam is going to make 150 lineups by hand if the rumors are true. Are those true, Adam? Yeah, fully intending on it. Um, I, I mean, I haven't registered them yet, but I don't really see any we- any reason why I wouldn't. I advise registering them five or ten at a time so you don't lose faith <laughs> and, <laughs> and have to run a train. <laughs> no, nah, because that, that, that gives me an out. Ah, okay. All right. Well, he's hardcore. Uh, that in makes any it event- a, if I do ten at a time, then when it's like four in the morning, I'll just be like, yes, screw this, I'm going to bed. But <laughs> if I register them all, I have no choice. Oh, boy. All right. Well, you know what? I'll hire myself out for your services. A dollar a team. Just let me know. Just let me know. Uh, Let's hit these early games. We'll just quickly capture them as a group. It looks like a three-gamer. It's going to be James Marvel going for Pittsburgh. Kyle Hendricks going for the Cubs. Uh, The next one, we've got the Yankees with James Paxton going against Jacob Wagspack. That would be in Toronto. Yankees carrying a six implied run total, Toronto just 3.7. And then the third game uh, that will be uh, carried is is going to be a slugfest. It's going to be in the mid-80s at 4 o'clock in our nation's capital. You have the Atlanta Braves taking on the Washington Nationals. Michael fulton going against Austin Voth. Nobody really jumping out here for me. I don't know how many pitches Paxson will go. Adam, he looks a lot better, but at this point with so many Four pitchers on the slate. I think we want to look for bats. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty clearly the top option here. Um, not a bad matchup against Toronto. I, I wouldn't mind getting him in lineups just because he is so much clearly, he, he's just so much better than everyone. And there is some cheap pitching. Like, I don't think there's a huge difference in expectation between a lot of the other pitchers. They're they're all in pretty tough spots. So I think Paxton's probably a priority here. All right. And then uh, amongst the cheapies, yeah. They're not even all cheap. What do we know about James Marvel? If anything, I am looking him up right now. I know he has a tough matchup against the Cubs, but that's kind of the case for everybody. Um, he is twenty-five. He's he made eleven starts at AAA this year, seventeen at AA. Struck out twenty point two percent at AA, twenty one point six at AAA. He's made one start with the Pirates. He went five innings. Doesn't look like he has great strikeout stuff, but. 4700 4700 you know there's not a lot of opportunity cost to pitcher outside of Paxton I think that Paxton plus Marvel is probably your your best pairing and I'm just looking here for pitch count so he was in in through most of the season uh in the low upper 80s low 90s uh, now a lot of that was happening in May June and July through August he has been um, uh, 80 mid 80s a couple times mid 90s a couple times so I figured we should and he went 85 in his first start there with, or his first appearance there with uh, Pittsburgh. So I would say 80, 85 pitches seems about reasonable. So on a pitch per dollar, James Marvel is looking pretty solid. Tough matchup again. We should probably have the wind blowing out somewhere between six and nine miles per hour in Chicago. But as Adam mentioned, that will get you a decent pairing there with Mr. Paxton. Moving on to the main slate here. Get my filters reset. We have the Boston out of the playoffs Red Sox going against the Philadelphia barely hanging on to playoff hopes Phillies. Eduardo Rodriguez taking on Aaron Nola. We have uh, temperatures in Philadelphia in the low 70s. And this one just feels like one I'm really not interested in on either side, Adam, especially if Boston runs out a regular lineup. They did have Friday off, so I would suspect most of their starters will be in there. Yeah, I mean it's a tough spot for Nola. He is priced down to where you know ninety four or ninety five hundred. You're getting a, a pretty decent value and a good pitcher. Boston only has a four point four implied run total, but it's still a really scary park for pitchers. It's still a really scary matchup against the Red Sox. So 
I think I'll probably be able to find better options. Oh, ESPN, don't don't fail me now. I'm, I want to look at. I'm calling up the old uh, standings here because I want to see where some of the teams are. So let's see. In the AL, uh, really, it's down to Cleveland, Tampa Bay, and Oakland. They're all within a game each, of each other for the wild card. The Red Sox are nine and a half back. Rangers thirteen back. That's not going to be a, a, a mix. In the NL, it gets to be a little di- uh, different. You have the Cubs, or pardon me, the Nationals are three and a half games in in ahead for that first spot. But we know that they can slump at any time. And then you've got right now the Brewers and Cubs. We don't know the results on Friday. They're tied for that second spot. Then you got Philadelphia and the Mets that are each two back. And then Arizona is three and a half back. So this is, and I just wanted to look at this because what we could see is potentially late pinch hits, you know, pitchers getting pulled early, et cetera. I don't think that's going to be the case for the Phillies. This does look like they're, they're going to be at least for the next week or two, right in the thick of things, trying to get that second wild card spot. So that's good uh, to see. The one thing we want to remember with the, the Red Sox, yeah, they're nine and a half out. That's a long way out. Um, they would pretty much need to win the rest of the way. Uh, to make it there. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you are making lineups. Continuing along here, we have the Los Angeles Dodgers in New York taking on the Metropolitans. Nice pitching matchup here. Hinjin Ryu going for the Dodgers. Jacob deGrom going for the Mets. Another one I'm not overly excited for, Adam. I really don't want to pay for deGrom against uh, the Dodgers, who did get Max Muncy back on Friday from the injured list. Uh, conversely, I never we don't know how much a Hinjin Ryu is going to pitch, and the Dodgers are comfortably in the lead uh, in the playoffs, having already clinched their division. Do you like either of these pitchers? Um, tough matchup for for both. Uh, Degrom obviously is really really good, but you're not getting too much of a discount on him against the Dodgers. You do have a game in Coors Field tonight, so bats are probably going to be a priority. Um, I think it's going to be tough to justify paying up for Degrom and. Reuse okay um, at that price tag, but you still have you know pitch count concerns for almost every pitcher on the Dodgers that isn't Bueller or Kershaw. So um, I, I don't hate Ryu, but I think that I would rather get to like Madison Bumgarner. All right, let's continue trucking along here. Minnesota and Cleveland. Let's see if we've got a pitcher here. Looks like opener um, Randy Dobnak. And then follower Devin Smeltzer. So you get the righty lefty combo there going against Cleveland. On the other side, you have Mike Clevenger. We love Clevenger. He's been phenomenal. This is actually going to be the fourth time this season he has faced Minnesota. He has had their number, Adam 22 strikeouts, 18 and a third innings. He has a 2.46 ERA against uh, Minnesota on the season. His season average is 2.7. So he's, you know, if we want to parse the numbers, he's been better against Minnesota than he has against the rest of the league. What would you like to do here with Clevenger or similar answer there with uh, with DeGrom? Really similar answer to DeGrom. I think everybody knows how much I love Clevenger and how good I think Clevenger is, but it's still a really tough matchup against Minnesota. Not to say that he can't have a ceiling performance, but the probability of that happening goes down because of the matchup. And at that price tag and with the gaming cores, with uh, game in Texas, with at least one questionable pitcher uh, with, with, you know, Houston. There's a lot of, of bats we want to pay up for. And so you would, if you're paying up a pitcher, you really need that, you know, you need that ceiling game. You're not really happy most likely with like 25, 26 points. And it just makes it tough in this matchup. Let's keep on trucking. We've got Houston. We've got the Royals. It's going to be in the mid eighties. There in Kauffman Stadium, looks like a 10 to 12 mile an hour breeze going out to left center. Zach Greinke going against Mike Montgomery. We do have to mention Montgomery. He's 4,400. Of course, he is a lefty going against the team that is the best in the league against lefties. That would be the Houston Astros. Uh, Greinke on the other side. Hey, Revenge, one of the many teams he has played for previously. This is a great matchup for Greinke. 9,300 on DK. We'll circle back on the other prices uh, on the other main sites just to put everything in perspective at the end of the show here. But Greinke at 93, is that $2,000 discount enough to get you uh, him in some of your life? It's somewhat appealing. Kansas City only has a 3.1 implied run total. Granke is a really good pitcher, and there are strikeouts in the Kansas City lineup. The issue is that Granke's not a great strikeout pitcher, so... Oftentimes, he doesn't really translate to to being a great DFS play. But I do think it's a reasonable salary. I think that especially 
if ton of ownership, he becomes more appealing. Um, it's I, I like Granky. I just don't know how much I'll get to. It really comes down to roster construction. All right. And for those that think he doesn't, here's strikeout perspective. In his last four starts, he has 18 strikeouts. That is across doing the math here, 20, about 24 innings, 24 and the third innings. So you can see it's about uh, 0.7 or so per inning. That's not a lot. His peripherals, magnificent. Three even ERA, one even uh, whip this season. But you're paying for that, not necessarily the strikeout. So do keep that in mind. They are three and a half to one favorites against uh, Kansas City on the road. Um, I'm assuming you're okay waving off Mike Montgomery. Yeah, as much as I like Montgomery, and I think he's better than a 44 not the spot moving along hey former team of zach granke you've got the milwaukee brewers going against the cardinals uh interesting thing here about the brewers jordan lyles actually was the last pitcher to go beyond the fifth inning that was back on september 3rd since then adam everybody has gone four or four and change it looks like they're willing to hold uh, milwaukee's willing to hold their pitchers around 70 pitches doesn't quite get them into that third time through the batting order, and then they just turn the bullpen loose because they have all the fresh arms uh, coming from the call up there. So interesting strategy that they are employing. They're going against Jack Flaherty, 10,800. Uh, he is looking at a 3.2 implied run total here from uh, Milwaukee. My how things have changed with Christian Yelich out of action, broken kneecap. Mike Moustakis is back, but it's not that scary of a, of a lineup. I mean, goodness, we have Corey Spangenberg, who's uh, playing a prominent role once again. Arla Orlando Arcia, the pitcher. Trent Grisham leading off. We like him because he's cheap. That doesn't really mean he's good or scary to Flaherty here. How do you feel about Flaherty against an incredibly watered-down Milwaukee lineup that's, not, that's still in the playoff mix? I really like Flaherty. It's an easier matchup for him against Milwaukee than it is for DeGrom against the Dodgers or for Clevenger against the Twins. He's a little bit less expensive, and he's started throwing his slider more a couple of months ago, especially against left-handed hitters. We've seen his strikeout percentage against lefties jump from about 20% to 26 to 27% since then. His strikeout numbers overall have skyrocketed. He's a really, really good pitcher. I still don't know how easy it's going to be to get to a $10,800 price tag, especially when you look at the cheap SP2s and it's like Mike Montgomery against the Astros or Felix Hernandez. So I don't know how easy it'll be to pay up at pitcher at all. But if I do, I actually think I prefer Flaherty to Clevenger and DeGrom. Okay, and that, that kind of makes a, a lot of sense there. Uh, one other thing to set the stage uh, with with the Brewers, the Cubs, and St. St. Louis. St. Louis actually leads the NL Central. They are up by four. But as I mentioned earlier, the Brewers and the Cubs, who they're up by four on, are tied for that second wild card spot. And they're three and a half behind uh, the Nationals, who, who have the lead for the first spot. So these guys are going to be slugging it out, coming down to the wire. Um, we don't have the game finished just yet. It started this afternoon, but the Cubs were putting a, 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 a they took Pittsburgh behind the woodshed, shall we say. Uh, five home runs allowed by Stephen Brault in two and two-thirds innings. Yikes. Uh, back to Saturday night's slate, continuing along here. We are now into the 8 o'clock section. This is where the offense is hiding. We have a Mike Fires going against Mike Miner. Adam do you think that uh, Fires has allowed five home runs or more than five home runs in his last two starts? I think he allowed more than five in his last start, didn't he? He allowed five in his last one, two in the one before that. That would be seven. Did you also know that on uh, in the early May, he threw his second no-hitter of his career? God, I love baseball. This is just <laughs> wild. So I point that out because Fires is all over the place. Why is he all over the place? Well, he's got about a 40% fly ball rate, 40% ground ball rate. Neither are great. They're both shading into the not-so-good side. Uh, additionally, he doesn't have a lot of strikeouts, and uh, he, he, he's not that, uh, he allows a lot of balls in play because he allows a lot of balls in play with the low walk rate and low ground ball rate, not a lot of double plays, so they don't necessarily get him out of trouble. If you hit him where they are, he gets no hitters. If you hit him where they ain't, he is going to be in trouble. It's going to be in the low 90s here in Texas. Texas is coming in with a 5.3 implied run total. Texas is going to be one of my preferred stacks of the night. 
We're looking at their, their secondary guys. We're looking at the understudies, as I like to call them. They are priced up, but it is going to be a low popularity spot as everybody tries to get to Coors Field. On the other side, you have Mike Miner going against a lot, I'm going to repeat, a lot of righties with power. How do you feel about Miner? I'm assuming you're willing to write off Mike Fires. I'm not entirely willing to write off Mike Fires. Oh, only okay. because it has nothing to do with fires. It just has to do with the slate. Um, he's fifty. He's a fifty-seven hundred dollar pitcher, and there's not a lot at the bottom. So, you know, there there might be some lineups that he gets into, and you just hope for the best. But it is a terrible spot for him. You know, he's leaving Oakland, going into Texas, supposed to be in the low nineties in Texas. There's plenty of power bats in the the Rangers lineup that can take advantage of his fly ball tendencies. So, it, it's not a spot that I think projects well, but it is a cheap price tag. And kind of as you alluded to when you first started talking about the game, it's baseball. You know. Stuff happens, and getting fires in some lineups, getting any pitcher in that price tag in some lineups gives you um, a lot of upside because of the bats it lets you get. And even better, if the pitcher's not really getting much ownership, it, it gives you even even more upside. So not advocating heavily for fires, just advocating for cheap pitching in general. Um, as far as minor goes, I don't really see getting there. Really, really tough spot against the A's. Not a lot of strikeouts, tons of power, bad park, and not an appealing price tag. All right, so to summarize for those of you that nodded off, Adam thinks Lightning is going to strike a third time here for Mike Byers. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling him Mike Byers. No. <laughs> All right. Hey, we, we, we're we due for one. We haven't had one for a while. I mean, the Mariners are on the slate. You know, they're, they're good to get no hit at least one more time this season. Continuing along, we have Coors Field, the Coors Field extravaganza, as I like to call them. It is going to be, no, not 80. It is going to be 90 degrees in Coors Field, we have uh, no real discernible wind. We're looking at a, uh, let's see, carrying the one, a 13 implied run total. Would not shock me to see that creep up just a little bit, mainly because Pete Flambert is on the mound. The youngster has a little bit of talent, but no seasoning, and he is someone that has not done well uh, in the majors this year, even when he's been on the road. Eric Lauer on the other side, uh, lefty. If I'm remembering correctly, he doesn't necessarily get his ass kicked a lot, but he is going against Nolan Arenado and Trevor Story, who both have 400 isolated powers at home against lefties since the beginning of last season. Adam, I'm assuming you're not interested in either of these hurlers. No, I'm not. Um, Lauer is a pretty average pitcher, but not what I'm looking for in Coors Field against guys like Story and Arenado. And then on the other side, Lambert's 4,200, which is appealing except for if you're rostering a $4,200 pitcher that isn't very good, it's probably to fit in the Coors game, and <laughs> he's in the Coors game. And also, Coors isn't even that expensive. Um, that For like the second or third time in a row, Coors is really, really cheap. Seems necessary. Yeah, I'm just looking. I mean, Garrett Hampson's coming in below 4K on DK. Austin Hedges is cheap. Uh well, it's just inexpensive. Daniel Murphy, 4,400. Desmond, 45. Hosmer, 46. Nick Martini, 4,000. Those are just like everyday prices. So uh, we'll have to see what the popularity is. We'll have to see where we think it's going to land and how we want to handle it because it's baseball and anything can happen. Continuing along, four to go here. We are on to Arizona. The roof will be closed for this homestand. Anthony Desclafani taking on Merrill Kelly. Merrill Kelly with a long and winding road, five years in the minors, five years in Korea. He is 30. Here he is in his rookie season. Been giving up some power, has had moments here and there, Adam. He's at 7,300. The roof is closed. Righty power has been his issue. So, of course, he's going to face a Eugenio Suarez and Aristides Aquino. But is this a spot you would consider him for his price tag? Um, no, not really. <laughs> What he's about just, Dis Disco Stu on the other side? Uh, we know he's horrible against lefties, but he likely will just face three because I'm not going to count Jared Dyson as a lefty with power. Yeah, depending on the lineup, Desclafani's mildly appealing. It's a, a positive park shift for him. The Diamondbacks don't strike out a lot, but there is a chance that you get a right-handed heavy lineup here or at least you know five righties. And with pitching not being particularly great in the mid-range on the slate, I think you could get to some Desclafani. He, he wouldn't be my favorite option, but I don't think it's terrible. All right, now we're getting to where we may have at least one pitcher of our remaining six. It's going to be a fun one, I tell you, gamers. 
You've got Miami in San Francisco, two of the more anemic offenses taking uh, scoring off against each other. It is going to be 60. That is 6-0 at first pitch. That's a 6-0-5 start, so it's going to be in the upper 50s before you know it. In that game, you have Robert Duggar taking on Madsen Bumgarner. Bumgarner coming in at 8,900. He will be facing almost an entirely right-handed lineup, but he is so, so, so much better at home. Talk to me about Bumgarner, Adam. He's pitching in San Francisco. He's facing the Marlins. I don't think he's very good, but I think that the price tag isn't adjusted for this matchup against Miami. I prefer righties against the Marlins. I prefer pitchers that aren't Madison Bumgarner always, but... On the slate, it looks like one of the best plays. All right. See, the, the slate makes for strange bedfellows. On the other side, Robert Duggar has not been horrible. He has not been great. He has been middling. I wish the price tag was cheaper. The uh, Giants actually have a 4.5 implied run total against him, which is rather high for them. They have the ability to go uh, very lefty heavy or righty heavy as they see fit with their current lineup iteration here. I don't think I'm going to be getting to Duggar here because lack of strikeouts. Yeah, if he was a little bit cheaper, I, I would do it. I still don't think it's crazy if you land there just because, you know, he's pitching in San Francisco against the Giants. But I he, he's not someone that I'm actively targeting. Yeah, now for, for comparison, for on Friday night, I was actively going for Beatty. I was actively going, even though he was 8,100 for Sandy Alcantara. I don't feel that way about Duggar, even though he's $1,100 cheaper than what Alcantara was. So You're, there are times and there are spots. If I land on him, as you mentioned, yeah, it's okay. We've mentioned a lot of terrifying spots, and the guys that we do like are expensive or are expensive and in tough matchups. So uh, I could see him probably 20 30% of my, my rosters on two pitcher sites. Bumgarner will probably be 30 to 40%, and then I'll be crossing my fingers with most everybody else on DraftKings. Two to go here, Tampa Bay Rays in Anaheim taking on the Los Angeles Angels. Uh, I'll let you chat about Glass now. Let me throw out a couple things here for Jaime Barria. Uh, Barria has been absolutely horrible against same-handed hitters. In 165 um, righty space this season, Adam. He has a 400 weighted on base average and a 362 ISO. Wow, 400 300 club. Welcome, welcome, Jaime Maria. Uh, going back to last season, he faced 272 righties. He had a 200 isolated power uh, then. So this is not a new trend. Against lefties this year, he's fallen off a little bit, uh, just shy of a 200 ISO, 10% walk rate. So he has gotten worse as the year has gone along. There's a chance he may uh, have an opener. There's a chance the Rays may have an opener. Right now, they're talking about Tyler Glass now being their main guy. Berea terrifies me, uh, Adam. I, I, I really like uh, the righties in Tommy Pham, uh, Avcel Garcia. Uh, who else is there? Jesus Aguiar. The, the Tampa Bay Rays are not one to fall into the complete platitudes of lefty-righty matchups so i'm hoping we get to see a few more righties their power righties in any event i'm assuming you're willing to cross off berea set me straight if not and then what do you like or dislike about tyler glassner yeah i mean not entirely willing to cross off any cheap pitcher on the slate um berea at 5400 i could see getting into some lineups in the same way that mike fires does even tyler glass now who's not stretched out he threw 33 pitches in his rehab start at triple a on the second so I wouldn't expect him to be going more than like 40 or 50 pitches. But because of the lack of cheap pitching on this slate, I don't think it's the craziest idea to maybe take a shot on glass now. Hope he strikes out, you know, five guys in three innings or something. Um, it, it's not my favorite idea, but he's only 5K. All right. Final game of the night. Then we'll talk about pricing on the other two big sites and we'll get on out of here. Dylan Cease going against... The man who once was king, that is Felix Hernandez. Hernandez now down to 4,700. Adam, I am actually okay with him in this matchup, similar to what we've said about everybody else. He does do a little bit better at home. Uh, the fans will be cheering their hearts up for him. The King's Court will be in, in session, definitely. And we do know that while they pack some pop, they do have some strikeout upside as well, the they being the Chicago White Sox. Hernandez, Dylan Cease, wrap it up for us. Yeah, I think we kind of saved the best for last. Um, 
when I was looking through the slate, for some reason, I kept reading Dylan Cease as Dylan Covey, even though I know he just pitched. But <laughs> getting Dylan Cease at 6,300 on the slate where we've, you know, I've said that I have tepid interesting guys like Berea and Fires and, and Glass now on a pitch limit. Getting Dylan Cease at this price tag against the Seattle team that has plenty of strikeouts in their lineup, it, it's not a safe spot. You know, Cease is still young. He's still going to go through some growing pains, have some inconsistencies. But the guy's got good strikeout stuff. He has a 24.2% strikeout percentage so far this year in the majors. They also talked on his the the last game I watched him pitch, which I it was in the last couple of weeks. Um, it was a tough matchup where he was pitching really, really well. And they were saying that uh, they might have fixed some issues with him tipping pitches. And that, you know, going forward, maybe he'll be better than he was when he first came up. But... I just think that at the salary, at given the other options on the slate, his ceiling just vastly out, outweighs his floor for me. All right, let's talk the other sites here again. Presenting sponsor Yahoo. They do have the management fee free contest up for Saturdays, just a thousand spots, but that is uh, $3,000 in, $3,000 out. No management fee if you've not yet signed up. Go to the third paragraph of any free article called the Spotlight Hitters and Stacks article, that would be the free one that's out there every day. Third paragraph gives you the link and instructions on how to claim your initial Yahoo deposit bonus match of up to $30. That's available in YSRP's Yahoo Sports Rewards points available for immediate entry into any contest. Adam, over here on Yahoo, we've got uh, some interesting names at the top. The top today is $53. Clevenger, DeGrom are 53, Granke 52, Flaherty 51. Who do you like there? Uh, I like Flaherty. All right. Uh, how about Nola for 49 or Bumgarner for 47? Bumgarner over Nola. All right. And then it gets a little ugly because we're not going to pay 40 bucks for Mike Fires. Desclafani at 38, as Adam mentioned. See how many lefties are in the lineup. Uh, Dylan Cease for 30. Merrill yeah, Kelly for 31. Cease. And that's really, really going to be it. Let's see where King Felix is. Felix is 25. I'll take Cease. Okay. There we are. So you actually have uh, the Cease one is, is pretty solid, as you just laid out. And then with Flaherty, so if you run those two, that's going to cost you $81. You got 14 per. If we go, let's click on the, the Colorado game. We're looking at guys... Uh, uh, let's see, Hosmer, 17, Murphy, 17, McMahon, 18, Arenado, 27, Machado, 16, Story, 20, Blackman, 19. So you can get it, get a, a nice little uh, three, four-man stack there. All you need is uh, one or two $7 batters, and you are going to be good to go. Should be some fun lineup building there on Yahoo. Moving on to FanDuel, Clevenger at 11-4, Flaherty at 10-5. Um. Who is it, 11 for? Levenger. Uh, yeah, Flaherty. Flaherty at 10 5 or Dylan Cease at 62. Probably Cease, but it depends on the bats. All right. I mean, uh, like, I, I obviously prefer Flaherty. Right, right. Uh, but the, but among, I would think that would be the next guy we'd go to, one that'll let you load up on both sides of Coors or Texas. But I'm a, in between the two of them, it's Duggar. Montgomery, Fires, Ryu, Kelly, Desclafani, Glass, now Lyles, Eduardo Rodriguez, Mike Munner. I mean, you're not you're not going to hold any of those. Yeah, um, I think. but again, like looking at course pricing, I think Flaherty probably is pretty easy to get. You know, these guys are are really cheap. Let's click on that. That leaves you three thousand per player afterwards. So, oh, let's have a story. Let's have Arenado and let's have Flaherty. You still have twenty five hundred per. Let's find ourselves a a cheap uh, two thousand dollar player, and now you got twenty seven hundred per bat. You can do it, folks. You can. Yeah, do it. I mean, it's, and that's the more expensive side. Like the the Padres have, you know, three K Garcia and Martini at the top of the order. They have twenty seven hundred dollar Josh Naylor. They have Hedges and Uri Arias for three K or less. All right, so that'll do it for Adam and I. We've got a big power-packed Saturday slate. No life before lock baseball, but you do get Jake Hari and myself. We'll go off around 9.30, 9.40 a.m. Saturday morning, break down game by game, every everything, including those four earlier games, the, the two, three, four, and six o'clock ones. And then after our show, you're going to get, uh, on the contrary, 
It is Alex uh, Baker, you know him as Osmo, and he will be joined by one Rich Rebar, who is filling in the guest host uh, seat this week on On the Contrary. So that should be a fun one. That's available on the Osmo YouTube channel. I believe that will go off at 11 or 11.15. So definitely, if you have not yet subscribed to the Osmo YouTube channel, hit that little notification bell so you can get an alert anytime we go live with content. And then uh, we should be, uh, now that Josh is out of the harm's way of hurricanes, we should be putting most of these strategy shows out onto the podcast uh, channel as well. You can follow that anywhere that you get your favorite podcasts at. You can follow Adam on Twitter at ship my money DFS. I am at Emac DFS. And of course, it is Osimo underscore COM. With that, gamers, good luck.